Gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome into John Gallo Ice Arena in beautiful Bourne, Massachusetts for tonight's first round matchup in the MIAA South Sectional Division I tournament between your Broughton Boxers and the Franklin Panthers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and today I am joined by my broadcast partner, the great Tommaso, Tom Joyce. Tom, you're very in tune with hockey in the high school south of Boston. Mm -hmm. What is this matchup going to bring tonight? Well, honestly, I know Brockton's dominated their league play, but Franklin's just been a powerhouse these past few years. It'll be a very tough game for Brockton if they want to move on. Right off the bat, Brockton winning the faceoff, Frank Aiton bringing it into the zone. He has it now, backhanding it once again into the zone. Anthony Paul can't come away with the puck. But Brockton setting up shot. Frank Atten backhanding it on net. Blocked away by number 15. That is Jack McGrath. McGrath able to get it out to number 28. Brendan O'Reilly. O'Reilly into the boxer zone. A glove save by Adam Stagnone. And a stoppage 27 seconds in. Yeah, as you can see already, Brockton's pretty physical team. 
they make it they are tough to play against no matter if you're the one seed or the 16 seed they're just going to pound you all night and if it if it's tough then so be it but Franklin's going to have to get over that soon well the obvious mismatch here is the Franklin Panthers have 28 skaters that's not including their three goaltenders Brockton on the other hand with 16 typically run two lines I believe Justin Crookshank and Zach Sylvia chasing this one down behind Adam Stagnone. Yeah, Jalen Bridges joining the fray. Sylvia coming away with the loose puck. Off the boards and out into the neutral zone. Anthony Paul backhanding it a little bit further. Brockton changes out. Franklin right back into the boxer zone. Crookshank. Pounding it around for Peter Sylvia. Sylvia with a shot that the goaltender, Cam Benham, didn't know where it was. Some definitely some nice puck handling there by Brockton. Marissa Massaro touches the puck off sides, and the faceoff will come out into the neutral zone. Brockton wearing their away black jerseys, my personal favorite look of the boxers, mm -hmm. with red and white trim. The Franklin Panthers, on the other hand, their home white jerseys with navy blue and baby blue trim. Peter Sylvia getting in the passing lane. It went off his backside, and Brockton trying to set up an offensive opportunity out of, out of it. Massaro is Brockton is off sides. They tag up. Now McGrath out to number 26, Luke Downey. Downey, number 32, his shot. That was Dan Magazu. Sticked away by Stagnone. Three minutes into the first period, still scoreless between the Franklin Panthers and the Brockton Boxers. Crookshank. Pumping it high off the boards and out. McGrath right back in as number 25, Noah Nasuti, takes the hit to move the puck. Brockton sends it all the way down the river for an icing. You can tell here Brockton doesn't have much depth. They just sent out two guys. Franklin puts out a whole new line. Should be tough for them as the game progresses, especially the third period. Could probably wear them down. Brockton's going to have to wear him down physically. Well, pretty good pace of play thus far in this first round matchup. At an indirect self pass, now popping it up. Taken by Paul. Paul stopping, popping, sticked away by Benham, and he covers up for the faceoff. Brockton's first real scoring opportunity of the night. It's a great effort on that play right there by Paul. Certainly nice hit right there. Just... Just need someone on that other side to dish it out to. Get that odd man rush going. Bridges winning the faceoff, but number six, Colin Opelt, taking it for the Panthers. Brockton able to keep it in. Zach Sylvia can't do anything with it. Now spinning to take the hit and take the puck. Kept in at the blue line by Al Birmingham. Now a shot, and this one deflected wide. Paul uh, Atten, rather, overskating it just a little bit. And now Jeremy Miller the other way for the Panthers. Certainly not the most skilled team, but you can tell Brockton's playing their absolute tails off at this point. This is Anthony Paul through the neutral zone, has his stick lifted. And Franklin spinning and shooting it from 50 feet out. Stagnone makes the easy save. Both teams change out. 11.34 to go in the first period. Still scoreless between the Panthers and the Boxers. Franklin winning the faceoff. Number 18 with it. That is Matt Holmes. Number 19, rather, the sophomore. Now Adam Assad. Assad trying to backhand it out into the slot. No one on the receiving end. James Kilrow. Back to Assad. Assad 
all the way out into the neutral zone where McGrath puts it off the boards as the Panthers have to tag up. Assad going down but moving the puck just a little bit deeper. Now Kilrow has it. He has it taken away by Zach Sylvia. A shot deflected and that might have hit the right pad of Adam Stagnone. Deflected to the end boards. Brockton able to clear but not out. Franklin with mounting offensive zone time here. Now deflected and a foot race for the puck. It will be won by Assad. He gets it to Thomas Siccio. Siccio pump fake now whiffs on the shot. Leaves it behind for number 25, Noah Nasuti. Nasuti around the boards is Peyton Sylvia. The defenseman goes down. This one off the stick of Stagnone and ramping up and out of play with 10-12 to go in the first. No, it's still early, but Brockton really seems to be holding their own here. If Franklin's had some excellent chances to score, and Stagnone's just made the saves. Nasuti out to the blue line for Opelt. Opelt back around the boards. That's Sylvia with it now for the boxers. Derek Sanderson keys to the game. A little bit before your time, Tommaso. Mm -hmm. Score more goals than the other team for the Brockton Boxers. Mm -hmm. And remember, sharpen your skates. It is a sheet of ice out there. For sure. <laughs> and thus far in this game, as Franklin gets one on the board, a backhander on the rebound. And Stagnone was already down and able to backhand it over the outstretched arm. And to the back of the net, Franklin strikes first blood. With 9.40 to go, I believe it will be Joey Blasey, the senior forward, with his sixth goal of the year. That was a simple fact of Brockton being a little off guard, a little off balance right there. Had their attention focused on the left side of the net. Goes the other way. Paul with the takeaway, sending it out into the slot. Bridges couldn't get a clean handle on it. Now Peyton Sylvia backhanding it right to Jeremy Miller. Miller into the Brockton zone. And this one sticked away by Stagnone to the end boards. Now a two on one developing for the boxers. It's Anthony Paul and Frank adding a shot in. Unable to get his stick on the rebound was eight. And now a semi break the other way for number 26 who can't do anything with it, Luke Downey. Icing against the boxers, the very tired boxers team that has spent the majority of this first period in the defensive zone. Officially it is Brendan Siccio, the sophomore forward, with his third goal of the year, assisted by Cam Casella. Stagnon makes another save and covers up for the faceoff. 8.54 to go in the first. Shot intentionally wide for Siccio. Franklin again setting up in the Brockton zone, now turning the puck over. Anthony Paul back in it by Bridges. Paul's going to hurry to the Brockton bench for a change. Assad to McGrath. McGrath dropping it back to uh, Jack McGrath. Franklin dominating the puck possession thus far in the first seven minutes of this game. Backhanding it again into the Brockton zone, taken by Justin Crookshank. Franklin changes out. And Franklin comes away with the loose puck. McGrath sending it all the way deep. Out into the neutral zone. Franklin will dump it in. Off the stick of McGrath. 
Yeah, shot this one off Zach Sylvia's skate and sent all the way down the river. It will Knuckle not puck. go for an icing. Number six, Colin Opelt, touching it just before it hit the red line. Now it is Stanley Carter turning the puck over to Nathan El Shami into the slot where it's taken by Opelt and back out into the neutral zone. McGrath sending one in on Stagnone. It's loose. A very lengthy pause before the whistle. 7.07 to go. The Panthers are up one to nothing over the boxers. There's that typical boxers chippiness right there. Say that first hand. Matt, I know you've been down here this week. What do you think at Gallo Ice or anything? think it's a good place for the boys to play? Love the barn. Love the barn. It's a little bit bigger ice surface than AZF. Mm -hmm. The facilities are top rate. Although we might be a little bit of a bad luck charm. As mm -hmm. both teams we came here to cover ended up losing in the first round. Mm -hmm. I'll certainly tell you, Southeastern had a tremendous regular season. 21-0-2. That, that in-season regular season schedule didn't do them much good. And as people might know, Dartmouth had the 5-1 win there. Dartmouth played some real tough schools. They played, they beat Bridgewater Random. They beat Taunton. They beat Greater New Bedford. Teams who are in the playoffs in Division One and Division Two, respectively. Of course, the winner of this game will have the opportunity to face the winner of the Bridgewater Random game here at Gallo Ice Arena on Sunday. Should that be the Brockton Boxers, we will have it for your Brockton Community Access. Oh, that would be a bloodbath. That would. The Cape Cod Bowl on ice. <laughs> In Cape Cod. In Cape Cod. Stagnone laying out on top of this one. 5.58 to go, and the depth of Franklin starting to show. As Brockton's rotating really two and a half lines. And Franklin changing out all five skaters at almost every opportunity. Yeah, to really be successful in Division One, you kind of need that full four lines. 28 skaters, Franklin has like five lines of forwards and six lines of defensemen. Probably got three goaltenders too. In fact, we know they do. Franklin, again, dominating the offensive zone time in this first period. Five minutes and 20 seconds to go. Franklin set up in the boxer's zone and hunkering down there for the majority of this first period. As you can probably tell by now, Franklin's a pretty offensive-minded team. Averaged more than four goals per game during the regular season in a very tough physical Hawkamock league which I believe will prepare them well, and as we're seeing, prepare them pretty well for this game. Nineteen forwards listed on this Panthers roster. This thing looks like a football roster. It's very long. For those keeping score at home, in the pros, you are allowed to have 12 forwards. Now a two on a half for Franklin, over skating the puck just a little bit. Aiden breaking this one up, sending it into the neutral zone. Four and a half minutes to go. Four full defensive pairings. Plus one for the Panthers, along with three goaltenders that all got decent amounts of experience during the regular season. Yeah, they split their duties in that, and both guys had very much success during the regular season. Starting goaltenders let up less than two and a half goals per game. Loose in the slot as Louis Goyette couldn't get a clean shot off on the rebound from Zach Sylvia. Sylvia comes up with a takeaway, gives it to Goyette in the neutral zone. He loses it, sends it off the boards, and Brockton will change out.
Brendan O'Reilly. Have the puck for the Panthers. He's got 19 goals on the year. Looking for his 20th. And he's got the puck now. O'Reilly all the way in. There's going to be a penalty, a shot, a save by Adam Stagnolan. And Franklin will go on the power play for a high stick called, I believe, against Goyette. That fast break right there, that's a speed you just can't teach. you got to get those guys on your roster. Very fortunate if you do, but not everyone has those guys. Peyton Sylvia in the box. Minute and 30 second minor for a high sticking. As if Franklin needed any more reason to set up shop in the boxer's zone. Taking their time, a shot stick saved by Stag and streaking the other way is Anthony Paul. Paul launches a shot saved by O'Reilly, or Benham rather. Now Matt Holmes with it. It's a little surprised he didn't try eating that puck right there. Wasn't really much the boxes could do there. Franklin's defense always seems to be nice in position. Half the penalty gone to Sylvia. Two and a half minutes to go in the period. Tripped up and Brockton's going to have a four and four as Adden hit the ice. I believe it will be number 24, Adam Assad, the senior forward, headed to the box. Minute and 30 second minor for tripping. Saad's been one of Franklin's top goal scorers this year. He's one of three players on the team to have scored at least 10 goals this far. Eighty-two goals scored on the year for the Franklin Panthers. A hand pass ruled against the boxers, and this one will go all the way down the river. Two twenty-four left in the period. Of course, that is a shout out to Mike the Postman Simmons' birthday. Slap shot, and this one deflected in. We have a broken stick on the ice. McGrath will get the assist. And Franklin up two to nothing with 218 on the period, scoring on a four on four. Certainly worth the broken stick. No hockey sticks ain't cheap. Probably run over a hundred bucks. But goal in a playoff game. Take that trade off any day. The officials having a little conference about what we do not know, but Adam Stag known is standing about ten feet away. He might have been yelling interference. So McGrath picks up the rest of his twig. Figure he'll give it to his grandkids one day. No goal. The refs have waved off the goal of the four on four. And now an explanation to the Franklin head coach. And some not so nice things being yelled from the Franklin fan section. I didn't know you could do that in high school hockey. <laughs> Did Never not seen a, a goal waved off after a review before. Benham playing this one as Paul loses an edge as he tried to slow up. Paul's stick is on the ice. Benham sticking it as Brockton now will have a 56 second power play. Boxes five on four for the next 45 seconds. It is Adam Assad of the box for the trip. McGrath holding, wasting out a good five seconds of the penalty. 
Now Zach Sylvia behind Stagnone. Saucer pass is a strike. Beautiful to block right Thomas there. Siccio. And sending it off the boards for Sylvia. Sylvia clean entry into the Franklin zone. A shot on the rebound. It's loose. The net comes off its moorings as Zach Sylvia was hooked by Joey Blasey. Certainly seems as though the box has had some nice goal scoring opportunities. They just haven't had any second man in, any chances on their rebound shots, deflections. Face off coming out into the neutral zone. 16 seconds to go in the boxer power play. 118 left in the period. McGrath off the glass all the way down. And that will kill out the remainder of the penalty to a side. And that jumps out of the box. Jack Sylvia over skating it. Two on two up ice for the Panthers. Number 10 with an opportunity and a save by Adam Stagnone. Then Magazu with the latest Panther opportunity, 50.1 seconds to go. Six saved by Stag, known 45 seconds to go. Sylvia ridden into the boards, loses a stick, picks it back up. Now Peyton Sylvia to Frank Atten to Anthony Paul and a three on one for the boxers. Now three on two, a shot, a save as Benham is run into and a shoving match ensues between Colin Opeltz and the, on his knees, Jalen Bridges. I don't think Bridges had any malice there. He's had a hard time stopping. But after the play, those Franklin guys are getting a little chippy. Discussion between the officials again. And the faceoff's going to come out into the neutral zone. Franklin winning said faceoff. Opeltz across to Stanley Carter. Up to O'Reilly, O'Reilly banging around the boards, 15 seconds to go. Jeremy Miller back to O'Reilly. And the net, somewhat unsurprisingly, has come off the moorings yet again. They gotta cement these down or something. You would think this is AZ Afarina. Brockton tying the puck up off the faceoff. The buzzer sounds, and the first period has come to an end. Franklin won the boxers nothing, and that's where we stand tall. What did you see in the first period, and what gives the boxers hope for a little comeback magic here? Certainly we saw Franklin's a very deep team as we analyzed for about 15 minutes of ice time. But as you can obviously tell, the Brockton boxers are skating very hard. They're giving it their absolute best effort. Definitely like that heart, that intensity. They definitely deserve to be here in the playoffs. They played exceptionally well in their league play out, scored their foes 39 to nothing in those four games. But for them to be truly successful, they just got to keep playing boxer hockey. They got to stick to the game plan. They need to execute. I know it sounds a little cliche, but they play really hard. They check those guys. They can 
give a lot of pain, and that they just got to keep giving that pain and maybe get a few guys do a little bit better job keeping that third man high, having those second man ins on those nice shot opportunities because they've had some good opportunities on the attack. They've had guys in position. It just seems like the other four guys are a mile behind them. One to nothing at the end of the first period. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job. Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into John Gallo Ice Arena in beautiful Bourne, Massachusetts as the BCA Traveling Road Show continues here tonight in round four this week for the Brockton Community Access Traveling Circus. Tonight it's the MIAA Division I South Section. The Franklin Panthers going up against your very own Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, the one, the only, the great Tommaso, Tom Joyce. The it, score is Franklin 1, Brockton nothing. The goal coming off of the stick of Brendan Siccio. The assist to Cam Casella. And Brockton has been playing very physical and pounding down the depth of the Franklin mm -hmm. Panthers. They don't got many lines, so they're going to get wear and tear, but all they can really do is beat up on all of Franklin's lines and hope that they can slow them down a little bit too. Well, Proctor with a couple of shots early in the second period. A short minute in and two scoring opportunities for the boxers. Brockton is wearing their away black jerseys, red and white trim. Franklin, on the other hand, home white jerseys with navy blue and baby blue trim. Justin Crookshank deflected off of Brendan O'Reilly. Now O'Reilly chasing it down. Crookshank picking it up behind Adam Stagnone. Marissa Massaro coming away with the loose puck. Massaro up to Anthony Paul. Paul turning on the Jets, but he's not going to win that race. Now coming away with the turnover. He's sandwiched. And Franklin prying the puck loose, and there's some dead wood on the ice. Zach Sylvia prying the puck loose from Adam Assad. Now this one popping up into the boxer zone. Peyton Sylvia working against Matt Holmes, the sophomore forward. Now it's Assad. Assad leaving it behind. And a shot into the torso of number seven, James Kilrow. And nice. Nathan Osiri turning on the Jets, what could be an on-man opportunity. But unable to get clean possession was Peter Sylvia. Sent all the way down, and it will be an icing against the Panthers. 
12.21 to go in the second period. Brockton coming out with a fire under their you-know-what's in the second period with a couple of good scoring opportunities early. I don't know what. <laughs> oh, you know what. Oh, I do know what. Looks like one of the Franklin guys on the bench just dropped his mouth guard onto the ice. That happened in the final regular season game for the boxers against Mansfield who we just saw lose 2-1 to one to the Severian Hawks here at Gallo Ice Arena. Heads up, we get a live one here. Athletic director Kevin Caro saw I think it was Crookshank picking the mouth guard off the ice and put it back in his mouth and he said oh no he's not going to oh that's disgusting we're going to see him in the nurse's office all the next week remember back in the football days I'd drop my helmet put it on the ground and you just have to put the mouth guard back in your mouth even if it was in the dirt it was so gross a little bit of dirt never hurt nobody that uh, gave some kids dust, dust pneumonia but that's a story for another day Crookshank prying the puck loose. Spinner on shot, blocker saved by Stag Known. And sent down the river, Anthony Paul in pursuit, but it will go for an icing against the boxers. Which river are we talking here? The Canoe River. Okay. Or the Salisbury River. Either or. Mm. Marissa Massaro in to take the face off. She's going to get kicked out. Peter Sylvia now in. Sylvia winning that face off to Sylvia. To El Shami, back to Sylvia. Now Zach Sylvia, the junior, leaving it behind for Al Birmingham. Birmingham tapping it back to Sylvia across the blue line. And he lets it go to the far corner. 11 minutes to go in the second period. It's a monster hit right there for Paul. And Franklin is going to be off sides. So neutral zone faceoff. Shot deflected off the stick of Peyton Sylvia. We're skating around the zone is Siccio. He can't get a shot off. Andrew Petty and Louis Goyette team up to get the puck into the Franklin zone, but the Panthers take right back over. Ten twenty left to go in the second period. Franklin hanging on to that one to nothing lead over the boxers. We're gonna have a penalty now against Zach Sylvia, who was tripped up, but he's gonna go to the box for tripping. So Franklin with their first power play of the game. Ten oh five to go. Sylvia. Correction, thanks to the Mad Dog Research Team. Franklin's second power play opportunity of the game. Peyton Sylvia on the first one for tripping. Now it's Zach Sylvia. Shot stick saved by Stag. Loose in the crease. Might have hit the helmet of Peyton Sylvia. Frank Aiton out into the neutral zone. 102 left in the extra man advantage. 
A glove saved by Stag. He can't hold on for the faceoff. And now it's sent all the way down. Anthony Paul in pursuit. A shot, glove saved by Stag. He holds on. Luke Downey, the junior forward. With the latest Panther opportunity, 39 seconds on the penalty to Sylvia. The more you watch them, it seems like Franklin's a little bit overzealous at times, doesn't really think things through. They ha certainly have the talent, but maybe aren't giving things time to develop. Might be in a little bit better position if they were. The shot, this one goes wide to the right of Stagnone. This one sticks saved by Stagnone on the rebound. It's loose. Jalen Bridges negating the opportunity, and this one pops up. Takes two Panthers to bring it down at the blue line. We're going to have a hand pass called against the Panthers. And the faceoff will go back downstream. That one was a little blatant. Also really didn't help them that much because they didn't really have anyone down that way. Fifteen seconds left on Sylvia's tripping penalty. Franklin wing the face off, three out, three up ice. A shot was saved by Stag as Noah Nasuti goes skidding into the boards. Seemed like they could add a nice chance there if they let something develop, but instead just went with the first shot they saw. And Stagnum made a beautiful save. Crookshank off the face off. Franklin able to keep it in. A shot deflected. And going to the end boards now. It's Assad backhanding around for Kilrow. The penalty to Sylvia is up. Anthony Paul. Standing guard looking for the blocked shot. Crookshank takes it on the end boards. This one sticked away by Stagnone. Now on in front and Stagnone tapping it over to Frank Aiton. Aiton turning on the Jets into the Franklin zone. Losing an edge. And now going down. The arms stay down. Franklin takes over on downs. I appreciate the football reference. Two on one for the Panthers. And... Missing the tap was Kilrow. Anthony Paul with it. He whiffs on the shot. Almost looked like a high stick back there. They were going to whistle if Franklin were to touch the puck played by a high stick. Rockton was the first team to touch the puck, so that negated that opportunity. Offsides, a whistle, and a stoppage as a couple of players hit the deck. Birmingham deserves some sort of an award for that hit. Nathan El should be off the face off, trying to set up the boxer offense. Unsuccessful. Now a two on four up ice for the Panthers. Now it's taken by El Shami trying to get it up to Massaro. It skitters on the blue line and an offsides whistle. Massaro wins to take the center ice face off. 7 0 7 to go in the second period. The ref getting in the way of now Birmingham's block attempt, taken in the boxer's own by Brendan O'Reilly. O'Reilly back in to the faceoff dot and a shot blocked away by El Shami, coming off the stick of Luke Downey. Franklin right back in. This shot zooms wide off the stick of O'Reilly. Now Birmingham. Unable to get the puck out. O'Reilly trying to tuck it wide. 
in the net has come off its moorings once again. They need some Gorilla Glue back there. Yes, they do. It's for us they don't just drill a hole in the ice or something like that. Six fifteen to go in the period. Brockton coming out strong, but Franklin taking the momentum back as of late. And the Panthers icing the puck here. Brockton's really started to figure this out the second period. They haven't put one up yet, but it hasn't been as one-sided thus far. As you can tell, Franklin's a pretty strong school, but during the regular season, don't doesn't mean any less of their achievement, but they played some lower division schools and had a lot of their success in the Hockamock League against Division II schools. Out of league, maybe didn't play the absolute strong schedule, and they have a very strong record to show for it. This one sent skittering out of play by the Panthers. Bridges in to take the face off, able to win that face off to Atten, but Franklin taking possession and out into the neutral zone. Three on three up ice and unable to deflect it. It was number 19, and it's under the glove of Stagnone, and a shoving match ensues between Sylvia and Matt Holmes. No harm, no foul. The shot zooms wide. Now Sylvia cleared but not out. And Zach Sylvia has it once again. Atten floating it out. Now Bridges with it. Now Holmes takes a hard hit into the boards. Arm stayed down. Assad has it. Assad leaving it behind for Kilrow. Kilrow into the slot for Assad, broken up very nicely by Justin Crookshank. Now it's McGrath taking a big hit by Crookshank into the boards. This one sent all the way down for an icing against the boxers. Got to give the boxers credit here. They're doing a nice job out in front of the net, really trying to pin Franklin to the outside, not really giving them those strong scoring opportunities, making Stagno's job a little bit easier here. Shot sticked away by Stagnone in the direction of us. But it stays in play. Peter Sylvia to Massaro. Massaro loses it off the heel of her skate. And taken by Stanley Carter of the Panthers. Spitting with it and losing it was Jeremy Miller. Now it's Massaro. Massaro dump and chase, picked up by Peter Sylvia. Trying to get it back to Massaro, unsuccessful. Franklin takes over, two on two into the Brockton zone. Sylvia pulling back. We're looking at the puck a little bit closer to the Franklin net. Now it's Luke Downey. Downey with a shot off the skate of Zach Sylvia, Sylvia with two blocked shots. Three forty-five to go in the second period. Shot and another save by Stagno. Definitely keeping this one in check. Matt, would you say you're at all surprised that how Brockton has been able to stay alive in this one? Yeah, yeah, that, that sums it up. A little bit surprised 
Adam Stagnone standing on his head as always. Mm -hmm. As Jalen Bridges kicked out of the faceoff dot, Atten will take it. Bridges with possession off the faceoff, backhanding it out of play. Adam turning on the Jets, he's got some room to skate. Tripped up, no call, a shot, and a goal! Brockton ties it up! Frank Adden doing all the work, and the puck was loose at the hash marks, and I think it was Anthony Paul making no mistake on the one-timer, going down to one knee, and Brockton ties it up with 3.22 to go in the second period. Gotta say, you keep playing the game hard, you keep doing everything you're supposed to, good things will happen. That's exactly what we saw right there. Got that nice second chance opportunity. Get Franklin's goaltender a little off guard. Boom, there you go. We wait the official scoring of the goal, but it should be Anthony Paul assisted by Frank Aiton with 3.20 to go in the second period. Jalen Bridges credited with the goal for Brockton. Assisted by Anthony Paul and Frank Aiden. Three twenty-two remaining in the period when that goal was scored. Now a two on one for the Panthers. Justin Crookshank, the lone man back in, cutting off the angle and negating the opportunity was Crookshank. Some more dead wood on the ice. Stagnone makes the stick save and covers up for the faceoff. Seems as though the box's aggression is serving them very well right now. Franklin's pretty aggressive, but I don't think you could say the same. Had that two on one right there, just threw it a little too hard. We saw that earlier as well. Brockton ending the regular season in not such a exciting way with a couple of five to one losses. The Mansfield Hornets in the final regular season game. Defeating the boxers at AZF. Sylvia to Goyette off the boards and out to the neutral zone. Two minutes to go in the second period, all tied up at one. Jalen Bridges assisted by his line mates Frank Aiton and Anthony Paul to tie it up. Massaro in to take the face off. Winning the face off back to McGrath. Crookshank down low. And Massaro working to give it go. Nathan Oshimi unable to gather the pass and it's taken by Thomas Siccio. Up to Don Longo Barty. That crookshank card off the boards. McGrath and Peyton Sylvia stopping it in the crease and sending it out with 1.10 to go. Backhanded shot trying to tuck it in was number 28, Brendan O'Reilly. Unable to do so, Stagnone making the save. Hand pass waved off as Lewis Goyette touches the puck. 45 seconds to go. Broken up by Bridges. And now Anthony Paul, a three on one up ice for Brockton. It's Anthony Paul adding to Bridges. Anthony Paul tees one up, looking top shelf. 
and he misses just wide. Now a breakaway for the Panthers. It's number five taken down from behind the arm, stay down, and Stagnone picks up the skittering puck. 19 seconds to go in the second period. Up and down the ice they go. Yeah, that's one way to stop a shot, I'll tell you that much. Franklin winning the faceoff, quick shot, stick saved by Stag, and it's kicked out. Off the referee, a shot, and loose, Cookshank picking up the loose puck with four seconds to go. He sends it off the boards all the way down. The buzzer sounds of the second period has come to an end. We're all tied up one to one. The goal coming off the stick of Jalen Bridges, assisted by Frank Aiden and Anthony Paul. Tom, are you at all surprised at what you saw in that second period that gives us an even game going into the third? I thought the boxers played excellent. They did absolutely everything they really needed to do. They played very hard. And as you can see, Franklin's flaw. I know boxers play hard, but Franklin's just a little too overzealous aggressive out there, as I've been saying. They had some nice chances, just just couldn't get them done. And the boxers are not afraid to get hit by the puck. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you a couple times as we saw, they fish it out of the net, or fish it out of the crease rather. You see the kids getting nailed by slap shots. That's what you gotta do to win these games. You also see they were getting down in their own, getting on the attack a little bit more. Definitely what you wanna see. Is that what you saw? Absolutely. One to one at the end of the second period, all tied up in the first round of the MIAA South Sectional Division I men's bracket between the Franklin Panthers and the Brockton Boxers. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you third period action right after this. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work or at play, you're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Oh, hey. She's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You've earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, <laughs> we can go ahead and call this a good night. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch, that'll hurt your bank account. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Two. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into John Gallo Ice Arena for a third period action. And trust me, folks, there's been plenty of it so far tonight. Between the Franklin Panthers and your Brockton Boxers, once again, I'm Mad Dog, Mad Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, the one, the only, the great Tommaso, Tom Joyce. The score is one to one, and Tom, it is winning time. Yes, one of these teams is going to have to do something here. I know in the third period, the Boxers seem to be getting it together. Depth could potentially come into play here. But Jack Sylvia coming within a few inches of getting a lead for the Boxers. And Tom, the question has to be asked. Did you see this coming against the reigning defending state champions? I'll be honest with you, Matt. I definitely did not see this. You know, they weren't as strong this year. That's a given. You know, the Hockamock League's always tough, but maybe not the strongest simply for the fact that not all the teams in Division One. But... You have to give the boxers a ton of credit. You'd think that Franklin would be well-versed against these tough teams, but tonight I think they're just running into a little boxer action right here. A little too tough for them. Can't handle that bark. Well, the two goals scored in this contest for Franklin, Brendan Siccio, and for Brockton, Jalen Bridges. 
We're all knotted up on the clean sheet of ice to begin the third period. 13 and a half minutes to go. I'll tell you, I'm very impressed by this place having two Zambonis going at once. Mind blowing. AZF used to have that. Four scored 17 years ago. 17? 17? Oh. It's the age of most of the players on the ice right now, if I had to guess. Sounds about right. D to D, Stanley Carter. As this one sent all the way down for an icing against the Panthers. Both teams changing out. If you are just joining us, the score is one to one. The Brockton Boxers taking it to the reigning defending state champions. The Franklin Panthers. The BCA Roadshow. down in Ford, Massachusetts because when it's winter in New England and it's 30 degrees outside, that's holiday weather, so we take a vacation down to the Cape. Yeah, I mean, if it's 30 degrees outside, might as well go to a place where it's 30 degrees inside. Which is why we're here, not at Easy Aferita, mm -hmm. where it's 4 degrees inside. Cold always hits you in about the third period of every game. That's when I realize it's cold in here. Otherwise, I'm just used to it. At a hockey game, there's ice on the ground. Kind of have to expect it. Did you remember to sharpen your skates? Because it is a sheet of ice out there. <laughs> I don't think I've skated in the past 13 years. Out in front and having a stick held up was Anthony Paul. Now looking for the deflection out front, broken up by Thomas Siccio. And now a breakaway on the other end, number 25 in, a shot of a blocker saved by Stagnone. And the boxer fans are on their feet. Eleven thirty left to go in an action-packed third period. Still all tied up at one. Luke Downey sending one wide. Now high off glass out into the neutral zone. As the Massaro line comes out for the boxers. Big deck in the neutral zone and we're gonna have a penalty. Anthony Paul is gonna go to the box. For what? A little too much hand action I assume. That's about as weak as a call I've seen in any hockey game. Anthony Paul in the box for a clean check that created separation from the Franklin Panther and the puck. The Franklin's gonna go on their third power play of the night. What do they even call that right there? A roughing, maybe. Couldn't cross, it could not have constituted a cross check, so. A it wasn't confusing. a cross check, it wasn't a hit to the head. We'll get the official wording. Roughing. For creating separation on the puck. Definitely came down just the hand usage right there. Guarantee if his hands were behind his back and he just bodied them, it'd be even strength right now. This one sent wide, 30 seconds remaining on the penalty to Anthony Paul. Shot blocked away by Zach Sylvia Stagnone. 
Covering up the loose garbage. 21 seconds left in Paul's penalty. 10.05 in the third period. Saved by Stagg on the rebound attempt. Able to pump it out into the neutral zone was Jalen Bridges. Stagno covering this one up. One second left on the power play. 9.46 to go in the third period. Puck is dropped, Paul out of the box. Now 0 for 3 on the power play are the Franklin Panthers. <laughs> Tapping this one under Stagnone and it's in the back of the net. Stagnone lifted his right leg just a little bit too much and the puck sliding right under it. And Franklin takes a 2 to 1 lead with 9.32 to go. There you see Franklin finally getting one of those second chance shots right there. I know they've been missing, going a little too aggressive, hadn't really got those deflections. There you saw it, there he buried it. And then, we got the lead now. Goal coming about four seconds after the power play ended. Now an opportunity for the boxers. Massaro. Out of Assad credited with the goal, assisted by Kilrow. Stagnone covering up a little bit of a shoving match. 8.56 to go in the third period. 2-1 to one, Franklin on top. Out of Assad from James Kilrow. Whenever you say the name Kilrow, I think of the quarterback Kilroy Brockton had. Michael Kilroy doing excellent work in his time as a starter. Had a very strong arm on the baseball diamond too. Now Brendan O'Reilly for the Panthers. Going on in front, sticked away by Stagno to the corner. The old forearm shiver in the loose puck comes right out in front where it's covered up by the stickless Adam Stagnone. Franklin winning the faceoff, but Brockton taking possession. 8.13 to go. And we're going to have a penalty against Franklin. It's going to go against number six, who is not too happy. That is Colin Opelt, the freshman defenseman. So Opelt in the box, a minute and 30 second minor penalty. 8.02 to go in the third period, and Brockton has got to score on this power play. Anthony Paul, who assisted on the first Brockton goal, 
Unable to keep it in, and now it's Kilrow. Skate to skate to stick for Thomas Siccio. This one sent all the way on Adam Stag. No, Zach Sylvia picking it up. Four forwards on the ice for Brockton. Along with the offensive minded defenseman in Zach Sylvia. Sylvia getting her around his man, and it's a de facto five on three. Sylvia goes down to the ice. Mazzaro picks up the loose puck, and now Franklin has it in their own zone. Siccio said to get 200 feet downstream. 35 seconds left in the penalty to Opeltz. Brockton has yet to register a shot on this power play opportunity. Now clean entry for the boxers. Up to the blue line, unable to get a shot off, but Frank Atten able to recover. Jalen Bridges now behind the net. Bridges has it taken away by Siccio. Siccio hits the deck. Now Anthony Paula to Zach Sylvia. Sylvia with a shot and blocked away by McGrath, and he sends it all the way down the ice as the power play expires. This is going to go for icing against the Panthers. 6-17 to go in the third period. Brockton trying to climb back for a 2-1 deficit. Peter Sylvia to take the face off. And losing that as the puck goes to Stanley Carter. Now Brockton launching a shot, this one deflecting into the corner. Brockton slowing up, and a long shot from the blue line kind of handcuffed Benham a little bit. Now on into the neutral zone, there's a water bottle on the ice from the Franklin bench. And a Franklin goal out of nowhere as Completely into the zone and able to just tuck it past Stagnone with 547 to go. Franklin has a 3 to 1 lead. It's a testament to Franklin's depth right there. Guy was skating hard coming down the ice. Brockton, as you can tell, as we've mentioned, only has 16 skaters, only really skate two and a half lines. These kids got to be exhausted by this point. They've been playing really hard. That's what happens. I mean, it's a marathon, but you also have to be sprinting the whole time. Very tough. Jeremy Miller credited with that goal, unassisted. With 5.38 to go, three to one. The Panthers are on top of the boxers. We want to take this stoppage to thank our cameraman for tonight's end. All week's festivities. It is the one, the only Mike, the Postman Simmons, with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. As he has done so five times previously this week. Yeoman effort by the Postman. Absolutely. And you are listening to the sultry sounds of the great Tommaso Tom Joyce and myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. No, you guys can see what's going on, but having our silk-like voices in your lives must mean a lot, too. I also want to remind you, Brockton Community Access is on Twitter. We are at the Brockton Channel. Hit us up there for brackets, live scores, schedules, and the like. What I am you? also on Twitter, at Tom Joyce Sports. I was about to say, one of the leading voices in high school sports in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. the great Tommaso. You'll find a lot of tweets. Massaro is down in front of the Franklin bench. Her right leg went into the boards very awkwardly. 
Massaro is down and she'll be looked at by both traders. 4.37 to go in the third period, an injury timeout. We're going to step aside and bring you the remainder of the third period right after this. Your daughter is having trouble learning French. Do you A, hire a tutor? Bonjour. B, enforce a French-only rule at home. Or C, watch some foreign films. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome in, back into Gallo Ice Arena where Marissa Massaro is up from injury and unable to get to the boxer bench. She is on the Franklin penalty bench being assisted by head trainer Jerry Connor. Three to one the score, Franklin on top of Brockton with 437 left in the third period. Tie up off the center ice face off. McGrath pumping it off the boards. Crookshank picking it up in the boxer zone. He sends it off the glass. And a turnover as it hit something. Might have hit a pile of snow, a shot. And this one off of Sagnone's shoulder and to the sideboards. Now Bridges Taken out by Siccio. Deflected out in front, and what a save by Benham. You now Atten cuts off Siccio to gain possession of the puck. Brockton playing with a little bit of swagger in their step after the injury to Massaro. You always gotta have swag, you know? Justin Crookshank. Indirect pass for Goyette. Goyette to Bridges, who dumps the puck in and goes to the boxer bench for a chain. Peter Sylvia has it picked off by number 24, Adam Assad. Assad with the goal in today's contest with the puck now. 3-10 to go in the third period. And we're going to have a penalty called from center ice. And it's going to be against Franklin. So Stag going to the bench for the extra skater. A shot, stick saved by Franklin. And Colin uh, Cam Benham Holding is going to be called against Adam Assad. You talk about a vital power play, Tom. This is it for the Brockton Boxers. Must score right here. I'm gonna say that penalty was a little uncalled for. Not, not the penalty, but the play itself. You're up two goals. You don't wanna do anything stupid to blow the lead when you're in a good position to win a hockey game. And given the, given the team the puck close, giving them a man advantage, that's not what you wanna do right here. Brockton winning the faceoff. Anthony Paul, one timer. This one zigs high and wide. Zach Sylvia with the puck. Sylvia down low for Nathan, oh, uh, rather Peyton Sylvia. Zach Sylvia shifting to forward for this power play as the normal fourth forward on the power play unit is the now injured Marissa Massaro. Good work there by Sylvie. Now out in front, picked off by Siccio. He sends it out to the blue line, but not out. Anthony Paul poking it to Atten, and Siccio able to get it out to number 28, Brendan O'Reilly. O'Reilly skating with it. Launching a soft shot, and Stagnone able to recover as Luke Downey whiffed on his shot. Massaro back out on the ice. Paul Brockton with 30 seconds left. In the power play, this one hitting a stanchion whistle and a stoppage. 
We're going to rule it touch the Franklin Panthers, so we'll have an offensive zone faceoff with 26 seconds to go. In the power play, 149 in the period, and Brockton is going to call their timeout. 149 left in the third period. Brockton trying to claw their way back into a 3-1 to one deficit to the reigning defending state champion Franklin Panthers. 26-second power play for the boxers when we come back right after this. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Welcome back into Gallo Ice Arena for the final one minute and 40, now six seconds. In the third period of this one, a 20 second power play remaining for the boxers. Zach Sylvia catching this one with his mitt. Sending it out in front, it's loose in the crease and unable to poke it home and now Anthony Paul to Sylvia. Sylvia across the crease, nobody on the receiving end. Anthony Paul north of the faceoff dot to Sylvia who missed it just wide. Morsaro fighting for this one, it's sent all the way down the river. As the power play had expired, this will be an icing with 1.16 to go. And the boxers with an offensive zone faceoff. I know this may be the end of the road for the boxers, but they've certainly had a strong senior class. They'll lose six players to graduation. Excuse me, I've been corrected. Five seniors. Jalen Bridges. Make a nice move. One minute to go in what could very well be the last minute of the Brockton season. And we're going to have a tripping penalty against Jalen Bridges. Forty nine point two seconds left. And Franklin will be on a power play for the remainder of that. Three to one to score, the Franklin Panthers are on top. The scoring summary is brought to you by the leading voice for high school sports in Massachusetts, the great Tommaso. You can find him at Tom Joyce Sports on Twitter. Great save by Adam Stagno. Now a breakaway for Anthony Paul, who has overstepped a little bit. The three Franklin goals, Jeremy Miller, Brendan Siccio, and Adam Assad assisting on those in no particular order. Cam Casella and James Kilro. The Brockton goal was scored by Jalen Bridges, assisted by Frank Ayton and Anthony Paul. Empty net for the boxers with 13.9 seconds to go. That winning the faceoff, Brockton unable to get a shot off. It's sent all the way down. And it'll be an icing with 6.9 to go in the Brockton boxer season. Franklin winning the faceoff. They're going to hold it on the boards. The buzzer sounds and the Brockton Boxers tournament run has come to an end as we have a little shoving match in the corner. A very frustrated Brockton Boxers team. Tom that really played well for the greater majority of this game but 
in the end, it proved that the depth of the Franklin Panthers was too much for the tough boxers to handle. Absolutely. When you have that many more bodies, you have those fresh guys coming in. It's especially huge for a team, any team, really, to have a fourth line. Fourth lines really don't play that much, but they get a little, give you guys a little bit extra time to rest every now and then. You put them in there, they can kind of hold their own out there. The boxers, unfortunately, don't have that many bodies. Franklin has that many bodies. Most of the game, you have to be impressed with the way the box has played. Yeah, they got to be proud of themselves. They stuck in there. Certainly, they're a big underdog heading into a game against a team, that, as you said, took D1 State last year. But you can't, you can't be mad at the kids. You can't be disappointed. They did absolutely everything they could to play a good hockey game. And they gave the fans here, they gave them a good hockey game. If you watch it, you're entertained for 45 minutes. Or, as we know, 45 minutes in ice time is not remotely 45 minutes in real life. The final score of the Franklin Panthers 3, the Brockton Boxers 1. The Brockton Boxers are headed home early in the MIAA South Sectional Tournament. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, the great Tommaso, Tom Joyce, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Head coach Chris Cunningham, your season ending a little bit prematurely tonight. What are your thoughts on what was really an excellent game by the boxers? Yeah, no, I thought we played uh, that's as well as we are going to play. I mean, maybe a couple of those opportunities, maybe we keep one out of the net, and maybe we get one of those breaks and a rebound. But um, we played as hard as we have all year. And uh, a lot of the guys had their best games tonight, and you can't really ask for anything more. Reigning defending state champions in the Franklin Panthers, what do you have to say to your kids after what really was a great season? Well, I said, you know, there's so many people in the stands here, and there's so many coaches right along here, and uh, they really earned a lot of respect. You know, they, they appreciate the uh, performance that we put in tonight. And, you know, so I, I told them we thank them for, uh, for all their efforts today and, and, and really – seeing what we coach them all the time and, and we're looking for them to, to execute and tonight they did everything we asked of them so uh, we were just really proud. Your senior goaltender Adam Stagnon really stood on his head for 45 minutes he's graduating what do you have to say to him for a tremendous four-year career? I thanked him for the four years you know his uh, his first two years he was a third string goalie and uh, he came hard he came uh, to work hard every day in practice never had his head down uh, his junior year, a, a guy had left, and there was question marks, and he, he really he, he took hold of a job. And, you know, he's continued the last two years. He's been our rock. So. What do you want to say to the rest of the seniors? The rest of the seniors, we, we, you know, we thank him for the four years. And, and Anthony Paul tonight uh, played on another level. I mean, yeah, he played with so much energy. He made so many things happen. Um, he had a couple big rushes, two-on-ones that didn't pan out. But, uh, you know, if we caught a break here or there, you never know. But, but he played uh, as well as I've seen him play. Coach, wrap the season for us. Um, you know, we, we went through a lot of adversity. You know, we, we struggled at times. Um, but you want to finish with your best performance, and we did. I thought every guy, uh, every player in that room was better today than they were back in November when we started. And that's all you can ask for. Coach, thanks for a great season. All right, thank you.